Hello everyone and welcome to the greatest game that was played in the FIDE World Blitz Championship 2023. I'm over-exaggerating a little bit, but uh, just because it features my favorite line against the Sicilian defense against the Knight, the C6 Sicilian. For those of you who have been following my Rapid Games and Leeches know that I uh, happily employ it whenever possible. Uh, it is Johann Sebastian Christiansen versus Hans Moke Niemann. Let's check it out and uh, see why this is such, such an exciting line. So Johann Sebastian has the white pieces and he opens with e4 at uh, c c5 the sicilian defense as advertised knight to f3 knight to c6 and now pawn to b4 basically the evans gambit against the sicilian defense uh, and hans uh, accepts the gambit he plays c captures and b4 both c captures and knight captures is uh, very much playable uh, and now pawn to d4 we have pawn to d5 hans uh, immediately challenges the center E captures, queen captures, and pawn to c4. And uh, for those of you who have been following my rapid games and leeches, know that uh, I get to this position uh, pretty much every time this um, uh, line is played, and uh, th there's only one good reply here. Okay, you could move the queen back, but the d captures and c3, b captures and c3 en passant is the only way to play this. But Hans did not play this. Uh, just for those of you who are wondering how to play this, if black plays correctly, I will show you as it's really a lot of fun. So this is the only way to play knight captures on c3 you attack the queen and if the queen retreats um, uh, it's just a, a immediate win for white and we've explored this quite a few times but the best move is queen a5 and now after bishop to d2 black has a variety of options but strongest one is e6 and after rook to b1 and bishop to b4 uh, you gobble up that bishop and now uh, black has uh, a couple of uh, options knight captures on b4 uh, will fail miserably to knight to b5 and now you don't really have all that many options already knight to d6 check is coming and uh, you will have uh, huge problems here a3 in some lines um, uh, well black will not play this if black plays this you'll figure it out uh, but after queen captures on b4 now d5 is the move and again you you kind of have to capture this knight the b5 is coming on the next move uh, so e captures on d5 now knight captures on d5 attacking the queen and also going for knight to c7 check so queen e4 check now you have to play bishop to e3 otherwise your knight will be hanging and this is uh, pretty much uh, not pretty much these are only moves so this is a a forced line and now black finally has to uh, figure out how to go about this position and with king to f8 it's still a game and black will you know have an equal game but if black plays anything other than king to f8 and believe me if your opponent has not seen this line and you play this with the white pieces against them they will not play king f8 unless they are above maybe 2450 so usually they will go knight to f6 and then the game will continue with something like knight to c7 with check king to e7 uh, bishop to e2 if uh, the king goes to f8 then it's just winning for white you just capture the rook and you have nothing to worry about the king on e7 is important so uh, after the bishop moves and you capture the rook the other rook can capture the knight uh, but here let's say queen b4 check bishop to d2 and now queen to d6 you finally capture and after bishop to d7 going after the knight you will just castle and after rook captures an a8 queen to b3 where the queen belongs in the evans gambit and many other openings where b4 is employed going after b7 and black will have to part with the pawn otherwise you're just gonna play rook to d1 and uh, punish black horribly so black will have to move something like king to f8 queen captures on b7 and now the game continues uh, with uh, equal material on the board but probably uh, you know by the time it uh, reaches this point your opponent will already be down uh, to to his last seconds as i imagine you will be employing this in blitz or maybe rapid uh, but uh yeah let's get back to the game hans did not play the only move b captures on c3 hans actually played bush, uh, queen to e4 with check and now white is just much better bishop to e3 uh, with the d5 coming next and you can't really uh, uh, avoid that so knight to f6 was played uh, and it is now already as of move 7 that we have a completely new game now look at this bishop to d3 attacks the queen queen g4 now d5 attacks the knight here uh, you don't gain anything by playing queen captures on g2 if queen captures on g2 you just attack the queen and then gobble up the knight so after d5 we have knight back to d8 as d5 square is covered by the uh, knight on f3 so knight to d8 and now pawn to h3 inviting the capture on g2 uh, which hans of course declines he plays queen to h5 and now knight b to d2 just going for rapid development we have pawn to g6 hans is now dreaming of bishop g7 in castles if he can get that in uh, he's gonna be fine but uh, 
chances are he's not going to be getting that in. Knight to f1. And this is a trap. If bishop g7, knight to g3 traps the queen. There is no square for the black queen. So Hans decides to give back some material. He's done uh, grabbing pawns. He gives back the knight for the two central pawns. Knight captures, c captures, and queen captures. And again, if bishop g7 with tempo uh, and uh, he, he castles, he's going to be all right. But bishop to d4 attacks the rook. And even if the knight on f3 was not guarding the bishop on d4, you could not capture it due to some bishop b5 check action followed by capturing your queen. But okay, having the knight on f3 is nice. We have pawn to f6 and now knight to e3. Further harassing the black queen, queen to d7 and now castles. And now look at this. This is not the way to play chess. Uh, all of your pieces uh, in one place and f6 played, yeah. Not not the best. We have bishop to g7, uh, queen to b3, again stopping castles, and now knight to c6. We have bishop to b5, not allowing the capture on d4, uh, and now pawn to a6. Of course, bishop captures on c6. Now Johann Sebastian parts with his light square bishop and the bishop pair, but he has enough from the position. B captures, and now the Andersen move, rook a to d1, preparing some very nasty discoveries. We have queen to e6, offering a queen trade, but now just queen captures on b4 and finally Hans gets the castle uh, but he had to give up uh, a piece in order to achieve that so castles uh, and rook f to e1 so Hans is down a piece uh, he does have uh... Uh, he does have uh, two pawns uh, for his piece, and if he, if he can get something from the position and activate his bishop pair, maybe he can still play. But it's not going to be easy. Queen to f7, now bishop to c5, not allowing the pawn to move, uh, and also just threatening to win the pawn. Rook to e8, and now knight to d4, going after the c6 pawn. Bishop d7, and now queen to b7, not allowing Hans a moment's uh, rest. Uh, we have pawn to e5, and now knight captures on c6. Bishop to e6 now offering a queen trade, uh, but at this point uh, Johann Sebastian uh, happily trades queens. Queen captures, king captures, and now knight to b4. Now it's merely a question of uh, can Johann Sebastian win this endgame being up a piece against Hans Niemann. We have rook e to c8, uh, bishop to d6, and now rook to a7. Hans will of course, of course do his best... Um, uh, to, to uh, do something as this is a blitz game uh, you can see that Hans is down to 20 seconds Johann Sebastian has 43 seconds rook to c1 now offering a rook trade and Hans plays pawn to a5 attacks the knight but uh, every trade goes in Johann Sebastian's favor so rook captures bishop captures and now knight b to d5 uh, we have bishop to e6 putting pressure on that knight uh, just to rook to c1 nothing to worry about there pawn to f5 trying to dislodge the knight from e3 to win material on e d5 uh, knight to c3 we have rook to d7 attacking the bishop bishop to c5 pawn to e4 and now pawn to a4 we have pawn to f4 hans uh, gaining a lot of activity in the center knight to f1 we have bishop to f5 now comes knight to b5 going for some knight to d6 check action and bishop to e5 we have bishop to b6 going after the a5 pawn now pawn to g5 and bishop to c7 not even going for a capture on a5 even though this is perfectly fine uh johann sebastian just wants to trade the material as quickly as possible we have bishop to b2 hans avoid it uh, rook to b1 and now bishop back to f6 we have knight to d6 with check now going for trades king e6 knight captures on f5 king captures and finally bishop captures on a5 creating a passed a pawn as well uh, rook to d3 and now bishop back to e1 so you're ready to start pushing that pawn hans puts a rook behind it but now pawn to a5 and this is probably one of the worst feelings in chess you're down a piece you put a rook behind the passed pawn and your opponent just advances it to a defended square that's i mean it, very hard uh, so here we have bishop back to d4 uh, going after the f2 pawn maybe you can some like rook a2 and then put pressure on it play something like e3 uh, but still that's a long way rook to d1 attacks the bishop king e5 defense and now even knight to d2 going for the fork hoping that hans doesn't figure it out but he does he plays king d5 and now knight to f1 getting ready for e3 but e3 does come we have f captures f captures and now the position is winning but you have to find a precise uh, way to end things here with white feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for Johann Sebastian uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that the pawn is not really defended. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Knight Captures on E3. 
Uh, this is what Johann Sebastian played, and as they were both uh, very, very low on time, uh, I imagine Hans was uh, very sad when this happened because, uh, well, you could capture, uh, you can't capture with the bishop, of course, the bishop is pinned, but if you capture with the rook, look at this, rook captures on d4, king captures and bishop to f2, and there's no way to stop the passed a pawn, you're gonna unpin, but then after bishop captures rook, you just start marching your pawn, and it's an easy win. So Hans tried king to c5, he tried to unpin, but doesn't work here just rook captures on d4 was played and it was in this position on move 52 that uh, Hans Moke Niemann resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here if king captures on d4 uh, of course just knight the c2 check uh, forks the rook and the king and of course if rook captures on e3 then again bishop to f2 with some very nasty discoveries like if you move the rook anywhere uh, then just a nice discovery will uh, pick up the, uh, the the rook here, or you play rook captures, king captures, then white is up a full rook. Uh, and if you don't do that, if you play king captures here, then you don't even have to rush it with the captures on e3. You can just start advancing your pass pawn. The rook cannot move. Once the king unpins, you will capture the rook and then advance to a7. You're already queening, and of course, an easy win for white. So you can see how uh, how wonderful this line is, and why I always play it. And uh, my opponents are never happy when they face this. Sometimes I mess it up, but like. I mess up uh, a plus six position because I'm just a bad player. Uh, but if you, you're a good player and you play this, you're going to defeat some very strong players like Hans Niemann. So just uh, just to repeat one more time, knight to c6, you challenge it with b4, and after your opponent captures, you capture the center. So just, you know, get into the mindset of playing the Evans Gambit against the Sicilian, and then once, uh, you know, you get everything here, uh, everything other than bc3 uh, wins the game for white, if white tries something like queen to e4, or queen goes back, if queen goes back, you just, you know, strike with d5, it's not immediately winning, uh, but uh, black will have a terrible time defending this. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. In the end, uh, Johann Sebastian uh, got 59th uh, place uh, in the World Blitz uh, Championship, but uh, achieving this win against Hans Niemann with the B4 uh, line against the Sicilian uh, is uh, you know, a reward in itself. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Carl Weinberg, Sergio Vignoli, uh, Anna Petanovic, uh, Robert Kiefer, and the Welsh fan for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.